What's going on YouTube? Thanks for stopping by another great episode on What's New Barbecue. Um, today's topic is ribs. Not just any ribs guys, St. Louis style ribs on the Weber kettle, old copper. Um, about a month or so ago, I was able to go out to Florida with my family for our family vacation. And I met up with Matthew Barlow and Martha Barlow and we got to making some barbecue. We actually made some ribs on a propane grill. I will have their link to their channel and that video down below in the description box. Make sure you check them out. Tell them what's new barbecue sent you. But we got to talking to each other about what internal temperature we like to pull our ribs at. And I actually uh, admitted that I don't even temp my ribs. So that got the conversation going. And Matthew Barlow, this cook right here is for you to show you exactly how I eyeball my ribs and go along the cooking process to see right when those ribs are done and ready to pull off. So I hope it's helpful for you and anybody else that's watching. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscription button and the bell so you can keep track of this barbecue journey. These ribs turned out awesome, guys. Let's get to it. All right, folks, let's get to the St. Louis style ribs, and we're just gonna prep them simply. Um, I do always check for this flap on the back this flap's not nearly as bad as I've had them be on there before, but I do like to cut that off because it's going to allow our ribs to lay even on the grate right there because that's just a little strip of, strip of rib meat actually. So I mean you can cook this alongside of it. I'm not going to do that today. Um, so after that, that's pretty much all I'm going to do on the back for just down home cooking for some ribs. Um, I don't like this extra bit of fat right here. So we're just gonna clean that up. It's not gonna be a whole lot that we take off, but we do wanna clean some stuff up that might burn or char or just create uneven cooking. Just kinda cleaning up those edges, anything that just doesn't look appealing. Just like I always talk about when we're prepping, um, you wanna really set your uh, barbecue up for success. So let me go ahead and clean my uh, hands off here. And we'll get these ribs rubbed down. All right, guys, let's get these ribs rubbed down. Just a little pro tip. Put some foil under your prep station. If you don't have just a dedicated prep station, this will keep you out of so much trouble with the wife. Um, today, what we're going to be using for these St. Louis style ribs is a really Texas style uh, pork seasoning by Young Bucks and it has some kosher salt, some coarse black pepper, brown sugar, paprika, more salt, and some other good ingredients like garlic pepper and some more different black pepper and onion powder. So really a true uh, Texas style rub. And I put this on my pork butts and on my pork chops and things like that. I've even put this on chicken wings and it's awesome. But what this is gonna do is put an awesome flavor profile, a good texture, and a beautiful color on these ribs and these are going to be like i said just some down home backyard barbecue st louis style ribs this isn't going to be an overly sweet rib it's just going to be a nice savory texas style st louis style rib and i'll show you what else we're going to do to these bad boys a little bit later but i'm going to put a heavy coating of this on here i'll have young bucks information down below in the description box so we'll make sure we cover all the edges there and we can touch up here in a little bit. Let's get these flipped over here and repeat. So I like to season my ribs both sides and on the uh, edges here. So I'm going to go ahead and get these seasoned up and uh, the Weber is actually getting fired up right now. We're doing a snake method. Um, so we're rolling old copper and we got hickory wood chips in there for the smoke. Next time I see y'all, we'll toss these bad boys on. All right, addicts, we're hovering right around uh, 260 degrees on the charcoal side, which means we're heating up. It's time to get these beautiful ribs onto our Weber kettle. It's smelling awesome out here. Let's go ahead and get them on here. Reminder, we're using some hickory wood. Man, this rub's really sweat in nicely. I didn't show y'all seasoning up two racks of ribs, but we do have two racks of St. Louis style ribs going on to the Weber kettle, just like that. 
Wow, that's looking beautiful. So, Barlow, this cooks for you. Um, we talked about it in Florida last time when we got to hang out and we made those ribs on the propane grill. I'll have that link down below in the description box, but today's cook is all about backyard barbecue ribs, and I'm gonna show y'all how I eyeball my ribs to see that they're done without having a temperature problem. So I'm gonna shut this down. We'll check on it in an hour. Alright, and it's been an hour, so let's go ahead and open up the Weber kettle and see how our Texas style backyard barbecue St. Louis style ribs are. We've been hovering around 300 down to 250 on old copper, so we're rolling right where I want to be and we're chugging right along. Woo! Man, those are looking great right here. They got a beautiful color on them and I'm not seeing enough pullback yet. We are starting to see some uh, juices puddling from the fat and whatnot, the rendering. Um, I think we're doing good, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and shut this down, and we're gonna check on these in 30 minutes and see if we need to rotate them around, uh, switch them around so we can get even cooking everywhere, but we'll check on these in 30 minutes. Alright addicts, it's about 40 minutes later actually and the storms are about to roll in. We're rolling right about 260 on the Weber kettle. Man, these are looking awesome. I think it's about time to get these bad boys rotated, situated. I'm gonna flip these or switch these I should say. So we can get some even cooking. Smelling awesome. Let's go ahead and get them situated here so they get some even cooking happening. Let's go ahead and flip that bad boy around just like that. This will promote even uh, pullback and everything. I would like for our Weber kettle to crank up a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to open up the bottom uh, damper a little bit. And I'm also going to spritz these ribs down, so let me go grab my spritz bottle. I'm happy with the way these are looking. We're going to spritz them down. This is just water in this bottle here. We're going to get them spritzed down. They're looking beautiful. Um, you can see we got a little bit of pullback starting to happen on this rack. So hopefully this meteor rack back here. Uh, thicker rack on the back end starts to get some uh, pullback happening as well. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and we'll check on this in an hour. It started to rain like crazy guys. I wanted to let y'all know um, we went ahead and actually rotated that bigger rack of St. Louis style ribs to the front so it can take the heat. You can see we're getting good pullback. Got a good bark starting to happen. I'm still gonna check with y'all in the hour mark from our last checkpoint and we'll see what these ribs are looking like and see what we need to do next. Man, look at that color. Look at that rain, jeez. All right, gang, it's an hour. It's been 40 minutes after I last told y'all that we were gonna flip these ribs around, get the meatier, thicker rack of ribs closer to the heat again right after it started pouring down rain. What I do want to do at this point, man, those are looking beautiful. I wanna go ahead and spritz them down a little bit with our water here, just like that. And at this point is where you could decide if you wanted to wrap them or not. We are going to uh, let them keep riding but I do want to go ahead and add a little top of flavor, a little pop action right here of some North Texas Barbecue Attic all-purpose rub smoke shake right on the top. Um, sometimes when you wrap your ribs, you usually add some sweet uh, notes to it. This is kind of similar to the pork seasoning. It's got a lot of salt, pepper, garlic in it, but then it's also got some brown sugar and a little bit extra in there too. All Texas flavors, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. I like the way this is looking. 
Um, we're gonna check on this in 45 minutes and see what it's looking like at that point. And then we're gonna be looking to glaze these bad boys, so y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, it's time to check and see if it's uh, looking like it's glaze 30, if it's time to apply our glaze. And I wanna show you what I'm looking for on these ribs. Wow, those are looking gorgeous. So right now what I'm looking for, as you can tell we've got a beautiful bark set on both racks of ribs. You can see we've got some awesome pullback on both racks of ribs. These are all signs that we're getting close to being done with these ribs here. Um, the color of the bark is dark, it's looking awesome. Just what I'm looking for. And like I said, that pullback is really the telltale sign. So let me get this camera situated and we'll get these bad boys glazed up. These really are looking ridiculous. I'm gonna give them a little light spritz with the water before we get them glazed, just to make sure we don't get dried out from that smoke. Look at that color, wow got some uh, pear jam here that I actually cut with a little bit of apple juice as well and we heated this up and that's what we're gonna baste or glaze these ribs with here some nice homemade pear jam and this is from my buddy Chris he's a member of the North Texas barbecue addicts I sure do appreciate you letting me try this out I will make sure to have his information down below in the description box you can check him out on Facebook he's got some awesome jams and some salsas and we're going to be trying some apple butter in the near future as well but i thought this pear jam would go great on these ribs so we're going to baste them and glaze them up with this homemade pear jam it's got some awesome chunks of pear in it i'll tell you what when i first tried this just to see the flavors that it was working with i had at least three spoonfuls of it just eating it by itself so it's important to put the glaze on at the right time because this is sugary so we don't want it to char or burn so we've got about 20 or 30 minutes left on these ribs that's a perfect time to glaze them up put whatever you want on it barbecue sauce or anything most of the finishing sauces or glazes have sugars in them so you don't want them to burn like I said these are looking beautiful what I do want to do just a little bit extra pop of flavor towards the end. We've got about 30 minutes to go. I'm gonna shut this bad boy down, try and maintain a temperature of 300 degrees. And next time I see y'all, these bad boys will have rested and we'll give them a try. Alright guys, let's go ahead and give this rib a taste. Man, look at how juicy that is. Beautiful bark, beautiful color, nice smoke ring. And this is just to show you, you don't have to internal temperature check your ribs. You can straight eyeball them and this is exactly how I do it. Um, recap, we hit these ribs with a little bit of pork seasoning and then that jam, the pear jam that we made into a glaze and then just a little bit of that NTBA all purpose. but. Enough talk, let's see how we did. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's a perfect bite, y'all. I'll take that any day. Let me get another one. Mm -mm -mm. Well, mm. wow, excuse me, these are completely juicy. Look at that, that's perfect. So, I appreciate y'all for stopping by What's New Barbecue. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscription button, leave me a comment, let me know you're watching, and until next time guys, y'all keep on barbecuing. I gotta kill these ribs. Woo, doggy.